Hello everybody and welcome back again to Let's Play Disco Elysium. It is day number four and we are in the fishing village trying to find our um, missing hardy boy, girl, whatever, Ruby. And um, we do want to explore this place a little bit in general. Apparently Joyce uh, has anchored her boat over here now and we already talked to her. But there's like another person we can talk to. so. Let's continue with that. Hi, officer. Oh, this is Lillian. Yes, we heard about her. <laughs> we forged her signature. And I guess she's the mother of um, the kids we saw earlier. A woman in a raincoat stands on the quay, considering an overturned boat. A sword in a scabbard hangs from her hip. A sword. Okay. Anything I can help you with? Okay. As always, I am the lawbringer. <laughs> that depends. Where are we exactly? I have questions. The first is, what's your name? Move on. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, apparently, I'm the lawbringer. You've graduated to lawbringer mm -hmm. now. <laughs> Indeed. Men with authority have their quirks comes with never being second-guessed about anything. She waves you off. So what brings you here, Ooh. Lawbringer? Well, that gave me a thought, apparently. Um, so, where are we exactly? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Illicibla. Why is that? The sign on the street leading here is illegible has been since they built this place. <laughs> the wind rattles her earrings and then it just became like the name of this place. So yeah, whatever. What is your name? I mean, I kind of know your name, but uh, will you tell it to me? The name is Lillian. People call me Netpicker. I think I have time for questions. And that was actually the second one. Okay, yes, um, you're right about that. So, um, let's see what other questions I may have. Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. <laughs> I kinda am, yes. Ask her about the cool sword. Helps to break the ice. That's a good suggestion, suggestion. <laughs> I'm looking for someone, maybe you can help. What do you do around here? Nice sword, point to the saber on her hip. Does it come with a story? Is it your boat? Point to the overturned boat. Be seeing you. Sure, let's start with the sword. Unfortunately, the factory sold this one with a three-year warranty instead of story. <laughs> <laughs> it's to intimidate folks, mostly. Okay, well, um, I guess that'll do it. Hold on, do you know how to use it? It is imposing, not. Isn't that what guns are for? So, do you know how to use it? Not really. I know some basic moves, and I know it sure as hell beats a knife when you're in a tough spot. Well, I guess it's true. But not when you're in a tight spot. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, if there's not enough room for a sword, that could be a problem. But either way, I'm sure it is imposing. It's a regular mass-produced sword, like a shovel or an axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure you do not see a lot of people running around with swords, right? So, even if it's not a special sword, it's still a sword. So, why do you need intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught the eyes of many men. <laughs> and believe me, men need a lesson in manners <laughs> from time to time. Uh, I guess they do. Can I borrow that sword? Why don't more women arm themselves if it's so effective? So where are all the men now? I mean, yeah, um, I haven't I haven't really seen any men around here so far. Um, I don't know, can I borrow that sword? <laughs> I'm not sure why I would need it, but it doesn't hurt to ask, right? No, <laughs> I'm afraid not. Tempting to confiscate the blade I use to keep these animals in check. You'd put me in an early grave. All right, fair enough. Um, so why don't more women arm themselves? 
What makes you think we haven't? <laughs> the truth is that almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. <laughs> well, I guess I can't argue with that. That goes for men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. <laughs> like anyone falls for that. That does not go for real men. <laughs> It does not go for you. Show her. Show her the wonder. The wonder? What the hell is the wonder supposed to be? <laughs> Coach means the expression. Oh, the expression. But I mean, I got rid of the expression. Behold, point to the expression on your face. I am a proper man, believe me. True, most people I've met are scared. Yeah, I mean, I don't have the expression anymore. Or can I just turn it on again whenever I want to? I just removed it, like, from my face permanently, so I don't have to have it on my face the entire time, but I can still switch it on if necessary. Apparently I can, so <laughs> let's show her the expression, I suppose. <laughs> Well, I mean, my profile picture didn't uh, reflect the expression, so I'm not sure if this is just about him turning on the expression again for a moment, or if this is like a bug in the game and it doesn't realize that I got rid of the expression. <laughs> but, I mean, apparently she was uh, very amused by it. Her eyes me meet yours and suddenly she starts laughing. It's hoarse as if she hasn't laughed in a while. Not bad. <laughs> I mean, it, it seemed like a uh, not uh, malicious kind of laughter. She just seemed to be amused by it. So um, I would uh, call this a win. <laughs> so do you like it? Find someone else to love it. I'm not a clown. <laughs> you sure about that, Harry? So do you like it? Sure. <laughs> it looks as if you could face down any horror in the world with that same unchanging grin. <laughs> it's like a shield. Yeah, I mean, the dialogue seems to suggest that he still has that expression permanently, which is kind of odd. The traces of her laughter are still there, in her eyes, <laughs> fading fast. All right, so um, why are there no men around here? Some went to patch their wounds, their lesson learned. Others were more thick-headed, and one of them, I ended up marrying. Yeah, but um, I think your daughter told me that he's not around anymore. Wait, why? If they're thick-headed, where's your husband now? <laughs> um, so why are they not around anymore? Guess I enjoyed the way he bled. Her expression doesn't change. It's hard to say if it's a joke. Yeah, I'm not sure what to make of this. If it is, then why the melancholy? So where is your husband now? Gone. Oh, gone. Just gone. Without any further detail. Gone where? Gone coward. I would never leave anyone. <laughs> um, I honestly can't vouch for that. Um, I may have left a lot of people in my unknown past. He disappeared. Sounds like a missing person's case. <laughs> Do we have like another missing husband on our hands here? It absolutely does not. <laughs> we are not going to look for him. Oh, come on. We can afford another stereo investigation. No, no. There's nothing to find. He's dead. Oh, okay. Lost to the waves. Well, in that case, um, I suppose we're not going to look for him. That's bad, what happened? Oh, say no more. Wait for her to continue. He died? Was he murdered? I mean, lost to the waves doesn't sound like murder. So maybe I'll just wait for her to continue. He didn't respect the sea. Mm -hmm. Went out there, drunk like a skunk, and sure enough, one day the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Yeah, doesn't sound like murder. At least no reason to suspect murder. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago, and I've moved on. 
There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with <laughs> sinewy muscles. Fair enough. Yeah, death is nothing. I shit on death. You should have thrown yourself in the waves after him, not sagely. Time really is the best cure for sorrow, isn't it? It's healthy to let go and move on. Gotta keep the wheel spinning. Um. Yeah, I suppose at some point you have to uh, let go and move on. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time and went on. Okay, that seems completely reasonable to me. Life didn't really change that much for me and the kids. She glances at the village where two little kids are playing with what look like rocks. Yes, we've uh, talked to them already. This is neither a touchy nor <laughs> a very interesting topic for her. So maybe we should change the topic. She looks like she's ready to go on a date with another, <laughs> better, drunk. Ask her. What? Both of you could need some action. Um, so you suggest that we're going to hit on her with some very, very low chance over here. Minus one, Kim's presence makes it awkward. Minus six, don't know a good spot yet. Explore the coast. This is a white check. You may well try it. Okay, so I have to explore the coast first before I can do anything about this. Um, what are my other options here? I'm looking for someone. Maybe you can help. What do you do around here? Is that your boat? Um, yeah, maybe before we uh, try to hit on her, <laughs> if we actually want to do this, um, let's ask the other question. So is that your boat? Sure is. The sun, I call her, coated with a fresh layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time for it to dry, assuming the sunny days continue. Sunny days, put your hand in the rain. <laughs> yeah, it's slightly raining. Aye. Sunny days. You got a problem <laughs> with that? I mean, the rain could be worse, so I guess that qualifies as a sunny day. No, ma'am. We have no quarrel with sunny days. <laughs> Good. It would have been bad news had it turned out it wasn't a sunny day. Bad news for the skiff. <laughs> bad news for the nets. Bad news for the kids. Okay. There's a moment's silence. She looks at the rain streaming down the yellow belly of the boat. When do you think it'll be ready? There's something we might have to check out on one of the islands. The origin of a shot. Oh, okay, so we need a boat to get to the island. That makes sense. I mean, couldn't we ask Joyce to bring us there? I mean, she wants us to be successful in this investigation, right? So, I don't know, maybe at some point we may need your boat. Shot, huh? The boat will be ready when the sea turns and the winds settle. You can't command the weather, officer. Okay, I understand. Waves wash the sand. A skiff moves across the mirror's smooth sea, far away from here. A lone passenger, a fast sloop in the distance, white sails. My prediction, it will be at least two days. <laughs> two days? So, at day number six, we might be able to take the boat to get to the island. Well, enough time for us to explore this part of town, I suppose. Um, so, what do you do around here? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves, take care of the kids, pick nets. Right now, I'm tarring a little skiff. Anything else? I sell the fish to people in the Delta to serve at their fancy restaurants. Authentic insular Indian <laughs> cuisine. And is that enough to make a living? Sometimes I also walk to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full <laughs> of surprises. Any interesting surprises recently? Keep it professional, man. Don't make it sound <laughs> like you're hitting on her. I mean, I literally have a dialogue option that would do exactly that. This is what is called a conversation. You don't have to be guarded right now. You think so? Interesting. What have you found? I never thought the sea brought in anything particularly interesting. 
Walking on the beach sounds quite romantic. <laughs> that does sound like you are hitting on her. Alright, I think I get it. Let me ask something else. Um, so yeah, have you found anything interesting? Wood. Pieces of glass. Every once in a while we see dead bodies. Human, animal, hmm. fish, other odd sea creatures. A mine washed ashore once. A mine? Okay, well, that is no good. Bottles, drugs also. Lost cargo in general. Most of the time it's just wood and glass. Hmm. All right. Major choice moment. <laughs> you only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose wisely. Okay, I can only ask one thing. Mines. Mines. <laughs> you need mines. Do I? I need to know about those human bodies. A mine, the RCM, could use a mine? Where is it? Drugs, I need info on this. Major Nark. Point to yourself. This place looks bad. Why don't you leave? Um, probably because she can't. I mean, where would she even go? Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should ask about the human bodies. We're still looking for a missing husband. Maybe sh he fell into the water and maybe the corpse is just somewhere on a beach. <laughs> well, you're barking under the wrong tree then, officer. I have no interest in floaters. Seen enough of them in my life already. <sighs> Very unattractive bunch. Okay. Yeah. Maybe stay clear of the things reminded her of the floater she oh. used to be married to. Okay, Just well, saying. that's actually a good point. Um, anyway, I am looking for someone, so let's maybe get down to the real business here. Let's see. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for a suspect who might have stayed in his neighborhood. I'm looking for a missing cryptozoologist. Right. That's another person I'm looking for. A working class husband. Um, okay, I hope I can ask all of these. But let's start with our prime... Well, not really suspect, but... You know, at least a, an important witness. Okay. When did this person stay here? Very recently, over the past few days, she might have arrived on Friday. Oh. I've been out on the sea for most of the past week. The weather's been good for fishing, so I usually start at four in the morning. Okay, really? Yes, that's the optimal time. Got to make the most of the calm. I've been sleeping like a corpse after. The sea really takes its toll. Now I'm just waiting for the wind to settle to get out there again. Sorry I couldn't help you out. Maybe I can help you find someone else. Okay, um, what about the missing cryptozoologist? Uh, I don't think I know what these are. Hmm. Care to elaborate? People who look for imaginary animals. People who look for animals who are hard to find. People who look for animals. Mainstream scientists and I exist. Yeah, it's primarily imaginary animals. Aha! Like snowmen. Snowmen? I haven't heard about those. Two old guys have been wandering around here, nose in sand, talking nonsense about snowmen and the like. Okay, well, um, this actually might be an important lead. So, what do you mean, the like? Right. Not only snowmen, also green men, monkey men, burning <laughs> rhinos. You get the picture. Okay, well, um, I guess they could be the cryptozoologists. It's kind of hard to tell. Oh, you're getting it. And it is gorgeous. <laughs> what do you mean by that, conceptualization? Anyway, where did they go? I don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were heading. Who else are you looking for besides snowmen? Um, well, I'm also looking for a missing working class husband, which is like super specific, I know, but <laughs> that's what I have uh, to work with. Yeah, I'm not really looking for that <laughs> anymore. Not much into the middle class ones either. Could do with some landed gentry, okay. but apparently they don't make those anymore. <laughs> they don't make those anymore. Um, so you want to marry a little bit uh, higher than your class the next time, okay. 
The husband isn't for me. I'm looking for him for his wife. Right. I wish I could help you with that, but I haven't seen your working class husband. Maybe I can help you find someone else. Okay, so again, no luck here. Really? Are you sure you're not also looking for <laughs> Nadia Harnan Kaur? Or Ignis <clears throat> Nielsen? Or the Great Lost City of Ace under the waves? I don't know, maybe I do. I am looking for a lot of stuff. That is true. A lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's what cops do, I guess so. Doesn't feel like a lot to me. Could be doing more. Maybe there's someone missing from your life. I'm just doing my job. Let's change the subject. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe someone is missing from your life. Again, this could be interpreted as flirting. If the person missing from your life is Harry. But maybe, you know, someone is actually missing. It worked with the uh, working class uh, woman in front of the bookstore. Oh, <laughs> there's plenty missing, but that's too much for even an eager terrier like you to handle. Although you seem very thorough. Tell me instead, is there something else I can help you with? I'm looking for someone else, actually. I don't think I have any more options here. I can attempt this skill check. I mean, it's a white check, but then I would have to invest something in suggestion in order to unlock it again if I fail, which I'm probably going to do. And I can't increase my suggestion, so maybe I shouldn't ruin my chances here. <laughs> um, and I will instead try to uh, gather a few points first before I attempt this. So, yeah. I mean, I, I would kind of like to see how this goes if I fail a check, but like I said, I can't put any more points in suggestion. Um, so, um, I guess that's uh, all for now. Anyway, um, I got a few more thoughts. So maybe with my next skill point I should actually open up another slot here because I collect quite a few of them. Bringer of the law, law jaw, temporary research bonus, minus rod and rhetoric, weird jaw. <laughs> hey, so a little observation, it's all cool, man, don't freak out, but every time you say I'm the law, and you say it a lot, it's basically hello for you. Your jaw does this weird thing, it sort of shifts sideways, hanging off your face at a jaunty angle, while the word law is, sounds oddly guttural and low, <laughs> it's strange. You wouldn't notice it, but after saying you're the law 80,000 times, the question does come up, why do you have law jaw? Hmm. I can't uh, answer that question, I'm afraid. And searchlight division. Temporary research bonus none. Missing persons case just really get to you. It's hard watching people worry about their loved ones. The little nervous movements, the dark rings around their eyes from sleepless nights. And even if there are no loved ones waiting, you like to have all your ducks in a row and it really bothers you when whole entire people aren't accounted for. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I probably should invest my next skill point into a new slot. Anyway, um, I guess that's all we can do here at the moment. Maybe I will return later once I've found a good spot at the beach for like um, a date. <laughs> Is this what you're hoping for, Harry? Anyway, um, is there anything else around here that I haven't actually checked out yet? Oh yeah, there seems to be something over here. Yep, there's some people. Okay, let me have a look at that. Who are all these guys? Um, I guess I can talk to all of them individually. Don't call Abigail. Don't call Abigail grumbles an unshaven man with a ruddy nose. He narrows his eyes at you as if in recognition and turns his head away. The noxious odor emanating from the drunken man is mm. strong and familiar. Yeah, clearly familiar. Don't you call her? Yeah! 
Don't call Abigail. <laughs> I am the law. Of course, now I'm self-conscious about using this phrase if it apparently makes me look weird. <laughs> um, who is Abigail? I'll call whoever I want. Don't tell me what to do. Yeah, who is Abigail? Uh huh. Abigail. <laughs> Don't you fucking call Abigail. He draws out a disgusting snort that mumbles, waving a finger in your general direction. Abigail is his wife or girlfriend. Chances are she's gone. Calling her wouldn't make it any better or worse. That is probably um, a very good theory. You're not going to get anything out of this guy. He's too drunk. Have you seen any women around here lately? Who are you? What's your name? Where am I? What is his place? Why shouldn't I call Abigail? Tell me about your friends. Point to the others. Yeah, I'm inclined to believe rhetoric here, but I guess I have to try at least. So have you seen any women around here lately? Abigail! <laughs> Abigail, where are you? Yeah, I feel he has like a very limited vocabulary. So who are you? Don't call Abigail! And what is his place? The man hiccups, then mumbles something unintelligible. Hey, I'm on an important official investigation. I demand you answer my questions. That is probably not going to work either. There's no use in yelling at drunks. He's barely <laughs> holding it together. Yeah, he's in much worse a state than you, Harry, and I mean, that's saying something. The drunk man starts coughing a really disgusting, hacking <sighs> cough. But why shouldn't I call you Abigail? Maybe at least that's something you can answer. He snorts and beckons you to lean in closer. Um, um, do I really want to? I guess I will risk it. Don't call Abigail. <laughs> Don't call Abigail. He then waves his hand as if shooing you away. Don't. Don't. Don't call. Slowly his head nods off to the side and he passes out tongue dangling from his mouth. There was little chance he'd be a reliable witness anyway. Yep, I guess you're right about that. But I mean, his friends seem somewhat more coherent. Maybe they can help us. So, let's talk to the next guy. Good to see you, friend. Do I have deals set up for you, buddy boy? He spreads his arms as if wanting to embrace you. The guy is called Rosemary. Does he actually know you? Or is he just shopkeep friendly? <laughs> I mean, is he a shopkeeper? <laughs> what are you talking about? Good to see you too, friend. I'm a police officer, not your friend. Yeah, what are you talking about? So what do you want? I've got smokes. Ooh. They're Ooh. cheap. Very cheap. I've got pills now. Great deal. You won't get a better deal on that piss. <laughs> Spirits I can let go for 300 real. I also have speed. And by speed, I mean amphetamine. Right, um, which I don't really need because I already have some of it, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, do we know each other? I mean, we may as well, since I've been here before. Sure, friend, you know it. He points a finger pistol at you and squeezes a trigger. Yeah, that kind of sounds like you, Harry. Don't mind old Rosemary here. He's a buffoon. Let's have a word after your high concept <laughs> transactions. I'll give you the lowdown. Idiot Doom Spiral. All of these guys have very interesting names. Um, but okay, tell me more about the amphetamine. Hi, by amphetamine I mean speed. I think you didn't hear me when I said I'm a police officer. I thought by speed you meant amphetamine. <laughs> I think I understand what he means, and I'm not here to take down, like, uh, s s small dealers with drugs. Good, good, my man. Now what can I offer you? So yeah, quite the business venture you've set up here. Oh, 
The system's been good to old Rosemary here, <coughs> and I'm milking her like a bitch goat in the backyard. What do you mean? You see, friend, man makes his own luck, and I made mine real good. Got my hands on three bottles of liquor exqueeze, sold two to the fellows around here, <laughs> and immediately invested the profit. That does sound like quite the business. Bought cigarettes, bought beer, even bought a bit of speed. And look at me now, I've got everyone on my hook. He spreads his arms and smiles a crooked toothless smile. The hook? Where is it? <laughs> I can't see it. I'm already hooking for Kuno, I think. <laughs> Looks like you're on your own hook too. Impressive entrepreneurship point to his vice stand, I proof. I guess it is impressive, kind of illegal, but still. Mm -hmm. Cook them and cook them, huh? You want to buy something? Let's keep it moving. Yeah, what about this bottle of blue medicinal spirits that's like 300 real? See, friend, it's real valuable. Worth every real, if you catch my drift. Got it from a bit of a business venture. Hmm. Not let him speak. No one can buy spirits for 300 real. That's crazy. I'll just have the spirits and not the story today. Thank you. I don't have enough money for that. So, I guess I'm just going to hear him out. You know, it's funny, actually. <laughs> he bursts out laughing, then takes three gulps of his pills and stares at you intently. He's finding it difficult to focus his watery gaze. So, what is funny? What? <laughs> I guess he already lost the plot. Keep him talking. What do you mean, what? What did you think was funny earlier? Yeah, um, can you tell me about that? This guy, this guy. <laughs> he says and shakes his index finger at you. Conversation might bring a discount, no? Hmm. Where did you get that bottle of spirits from? Okay, can I just get the spirits if that's okay with you? You know what? I don't want the spirits anymore. Um, yeah, where did you get it from? Oh, this is medicinal spirits. The good stuff. Got it from the doctor's office. Alright. I got one of those scientific ampoules a few months ago. Torpedo, they call it. It's supposed to keep a man from taking a drink. <sighs> he spits a nasty yellow clot on the ground before you. Didn't stop me for shit, that's for sure. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. That's a good tip, I should remember it. That sounds dangerous. Five lemons with half a pack of butter and you're good to go. I am not entirely sure what he's talking about. But I will try to remember it. <laughs> It really isn't. In a week, the goddamn kidneys started giving me all kinds of help. Finally, the missus took me to a private doctor's office. Not <laughs> a charity, the real thing. So basically, this is some kind of um, recipe against alcoholism. Yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> if that works. Those arseholes. Those arseholes charged me four real to remove the damn thing. <laughs> but I came out on top after all. Assholes, have they no shame taking money for a service they provide? <laughs> okay, how? <laughs> um, I mean, for real doesn't even seem that expensive. Um, but I guess they are assholes anyway. But the idiots left me alone in there. Now, I used to teach high school biology. I really? know what doctors use to preserve dead fingies. He gets an excited gleam in his eyes. Swipe three cans of this blue medicinal stuff from the back room. Threw the snakes out and voila. What's left is this beautiful <laughs> blue stuff. 98.7% almost pure alcohol. Okay, so you stole it from a doctor's office and it was used to preserve snakes? <laughs> I don't know, maybe eels? Not sure if they're using eels for medicinal purposes. <laughs> But I mean, they're supposed to be dead, so they can't be like live eels, but this doesn't really seem like something I want to drink, to be honest. Two I already sold to these fine gentlemen here. 
But this last one is yours for three real if you want it. <laughs> three? I thought 300. I was just about to say there's no way that these two had 300 real to buy one of these bottles from you. But apparently the price just dropped um, quite a bit. Don't say it. I thought it was 300 real. Can I smell it first? I think it will prove useful. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. Can I smell it first? Yeah, be careful. It's extremely flammable. One spark in the entire city of Revachon is wiped off the map. <laughs> so it's also explosive. Okay. Feels like someone set a mustard field ablaze right inside your nose, then drenched it in tear gas. Your nose is a singular source of pain. <laughs> but at the same time, you don't remember the last time you felt so alive. Oh dear, oh dear. In all fairness, that might be attributed to the retrograde amnesia. In all fairness, indeed. So, what's the deal, friend? Want the spirits or not? I mean, if it is three real, I think I may actually want to buy it. I think it will prove useful, yes. Sure. Free real and it's yours, friend. The deal of a lifetime. <laughs> Maybe it was just mislabeled when he said 300 real. Maybe it was three all along. Well done. You got it. Or he just forgot that he uh, wanted that much money for it. <laughs> That's a much more reasonable price right there. Makes I would say now. so. Um. Yeah, it, it doesn't really tell me what it does. Uh, unlike all the other items so it may not do anything <laughs> but i am curious so i'm going Just to buy make it. sure to enjoy that one friend i will probably or it might kill me son you will not kill yourself with this <laughs> not today so we're going to store this as a sellable item go sell it at the pawn shop for a uh, okay so I couldn't use it even if I wanted to. <laughs> um, I don't think I badly need any of this at the moment. So I guess I'm off. In the civilized world, it's a custom to tip the shopkeep, friend. <laughs> but come back anyway. Really? Anyway, uh, I will have a look at that item in a second. Wow, you work hard. I do? Oh, Yes, you hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep <laughs> it real and provide. What triggered uh, this piece of dialogue? Um, so what hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand hmm. and linoleum after you re-emerged. Okay, um, a good point. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way. And you won't let it break you. You ride. <laughs> yeah, I ride a little. I fucking ride till I die, bitch. I'm not sure I ride. <laughs> yeah, I guess a little bit, maybe. A little? You make money. <laughs> you got gills, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. Okay. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't <laughs> lose. You're a cop and a sprinter and a money printer. Then why am I still so poor? I mean, I'm not as poor as uh, I was in the beginning of the game, but still, that doesn't seem like a lot of money. I mean, yeah, I did take the bribe from that Joyce woman. I really needed that jo uh, that uh, bribe to pay for my room. Can't say I didn't make that ceiling guy give some of his money either. Yep, I did that as well. Sure, and I got a giant novelty check from Evra. Oh, and then there's pawning stuff off to that suspicious Roy guy. Did I actually? I don't remember pawning anything off, but... Maybe I just forgot. I guess I've made some guilds, sure. Um, I did take the bribe, indeed. 
Oh, yeah. You took that bribe hard. You're a killer. And I have made a ceiling give me money as well. Can't say that. You shook him. You're a <laughs> killer. A shark. And I got the giant novelty check from Evra, although I did refuse his second bribe because he was getting really cheap by only offering me like five real. And I was like, I have a little bit of dignity left, but I did take the novelty check. Wasn't easy getting that giant novelty check from Everard. Took some ingenuity to get into the harbor, but <laughs> you got in and you took that bribe as hard as any cops take it. <laughs> And yeah, I don't really remember what I pawned off, but apparently I, I did do that at some point. Yeah, you're in the sales business. Shake them for shit and then pawn it off. Law officer style. So yeah, I guess I've made some guilds, sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into <laughs> cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself. Okay. Are you rich? Yes, quite. No, I'm actually not. Um, I think by any objective standard, no, I'm not rich. I barely made enough to pay for my room each night. And for some alcohol every now and then. That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave and you're still practically a hobo. <laughs> Why is that? It's because of that guard guy riding my ass. The system is broken. There's a market for corrupt cops out there. But the immigrant cop have price dumped it. <laughs> Fucking taxes, man. I don't know. Why am I so poor? <laughs> I mean, God is part of the reason, I suppose, because um, he took most of my money. Then again, I kind of destroyed his room. Still, God is definitely part of the reason here. The God man has set himself up one of those self-replicating money structures. You should learn from it. Don't play the victim. Think, hustler. Think with your head. <laughs> the system is broken. Yeah, maybe the system is just broken. Boo-hoo. The system <laughs> is broken. The establishment is keeping me down. That's not the fuck here attitude you're used to. What is this? Why are you so poor? Fucking taxes, man. As far as I know, I haven't paid any taxes so far, so this can't be it. So, I don't know. Why am I so poor? Because of the taxes. Oh, so it is a Texas. got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, <laughs> stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Okay, well, I guess I might be like consumption taxes on all the items I bought, right? <laughs> Our tax is almost non-existent in the Gossam estate, that is Rivershaw. <laughs> well, apparently, um, there were no taxes around here. You and I both, but they got those indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, <laughs> excise duty, extraction tax. This tax that doesn't even have a name. <laughs> Plus, there's the stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for more money from you here. The Gossam Estate's a myth. In total, the coalition government is taking... 98% of all your money. 98%? No fucking way. I guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now. Are you sure? That seems like a pretty big number. This isn't helping me solve my money problem. It's only making me into a free market type. Yeah, this seems like maybe a little bit too high. What are you not sure about? They're milking your nipples till they bleed. Can't you see? Aren't you sick and tired of having mm -hmm. bloody nipples? Um, bleeding nipples are kind of a pain, but how will deregulation help me with that? Opt in, but only a little? What does that even mean? <laughs> um, I mean, I guess this is like um, another thought, and this time for the ultra-liberal path. 
So again, I will just accept this because I don't actually have to internalize the thought. So, um, I guess I'm a free market fundamentalist now, even though I already kind of committed to building communism. <laughs> here you go, Hustler. Yep, here we go. Fight the righteous fight. Free the people. Keep it real. Keep it street. Keep foaming at the mouth furiously on the tax issue. All right. So, yep, yeah, that is another thought. Indirect modes of taxation. Temporary research bonus minus to empathy, cold-blooded. First, if you have a side bitch ideology cooking somewhere, don't sweat it. Fighting indirect taxation for the Gossamer state is compatible with all creeds. Okay, it's cool like that. You're a cool anarchist now, unless you don't want to be an anarchist, whatever. Stuff this meal ticket in your eye socket and let's see if we can steal some love back from the robber barons at the customs agency and the banditos at the Insulindian Financial Oversight and Competition Committee. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's another... another thought for me. Okay, it's because I reached four points ultra-liberal, so... Uh, that's why I got that thought. And I guess I got that point because I uh, bought this spirit for a lower price so I can sell it. Okay, I mean I can make three real profits from it if I sell it now. The liquid has an unearthly blue tint. The kind of might or might not, but definitely does glow in the dark. This is a 98.7 pure alcohol. Keep it away from an open flame. Okay, so um, I still haven't leveled up, so I can't open up any new uh, slots at the moment. But we have another person to talk to, so we will continue that in the next episode. For now, let's call it a day as always. Thank you for watching and see you again next time.